I think the real challenge for business in town centres nowadays is online. Yes. I think it's e-retail. And if you talk to a lot of them, that's where the, the people who they're competing against isn't actually a big Tesco. So they've got a different product range. What they're competing with is the global market. Yeah. Wake Up To Business is your Get The Business Day Started program, coming from the country's top business shows, expos and networking events. Join us as we discuss today's business news, strategy and gain some tips from our panellists who might help you in your business today. Well, as I said uh, just a few moments ago, before we had to make this sudden edit, the uh, local MP turned up and he is now with me, Ed Davey. Thank you very much for joining us today My on pleasure. the programme. And also Sue Rees is back with us, who of course is the organiser of Business Biscotti UK. We just had a really interesting discussion about some of the issues uh, to do with business. Um, one of the ones that you were raising was this whole aspect about communication, particularly for micro-businesses, for people that don't have the lobbying power. Can you just tell us a bit about what you said again? Yeah, I think one of the issues that I see, Ed, coming through very strongly through our community is that that communication channel that used to be in place from government into the SME and the micro sector just isn't there. So we've got a lot of people who are doing piecemeal bits of training and bits of advice and expertise but there's nothing that is coming down from government that's saying this is the place where you can get information on how to employ your first person. Because we used to have biz, um, Business Link London didn't we and that turned into a health basically. Uh, well I, I think Sue is right and it's great well, to be here at, as well, at uh, Business Biscotti and I, I, I've really impressed by the organisation so if people haven't heard of Business Biscotti I think they should look it up on the website no and, get, about and, it, yeah. and get involved. Um, I think Sue's right though um, as part of the austerity measures as part of reducing the deficit there was a lot of cuts uh, in the department for business uh, and indeed many other departments and one of the things that we did in order to try to keep services but um, uh, cut back on expenditure was put a lot of uh, the advice online yeah. and through uh, helplines yeah. and that did remove unfortunately some of the business advisors who can actually go out and talk to people so yeah. I'm not surprised that's a, a problem. I think as the economy ticks up it needs to be a priority yeah. we need to make sure that our messages are getting out and we need to advertise the advice that is there. I mean there's some really good advice I mean um, but is, it, is it that uh, the, the business model wasn't really effective because at the end of the day you know, just like in any business if you put money into it and you get a return on it you're going to carry on doing it so the Business Link London, I went along to quite a few of their events, but if the amount of money and time they were putting into training courses wasn't delivering the results, it wasn't well, worth doing it. Yeah, I mean, I think where one's got to target business advice mo more effectively. That's what I mean. And I think, it's got to uh, work. yeah, as Business Biscotti has shown, using social media, using uh, the internet can be incredibly effective for bringing people together. And I think we are moving in, let's face it, every business person is now internet savvy, has to be, to yeah, survive. Uh, and, and therefore, I think government actually needs to be in that space more and more yeah. with quality, but also helping people to find that so it's going to be more, more manageable. Um, one area where I think we still have to keep uh, people who can handhold businesses is in exports. Yeah. So one of the things that Vince Cable has done, my Lib Dem Cat colleague who's Secretary State for Business, and I was doing when I was the Trade Minister under him, is reform UK trade investment, UKTI. Yeah. This is the, uh, an arm of government which has helped businesses to export. Yeah. Particularly first time. I mean, they uh, are experience. quite prominent, and I've come across them at quite a few events as well. And they do a tremendous job of really holding your hand and encouraging you. But coming back to that point about the sort of the micro businesses, where's that for the micro businesses? Well, it, it does exist in UKTI, but I think a lot of micro businesses aren't exporting, um, understandably. Yeah, I mean, in terms of the advice yeah. and the support. Well, I think most of it you will find online these days. Yeah. Um, one of the things I was talking about that I got involved with, which is my idea as a business minister, is still being developed because we're having a few issues with Treasury and HMRC to, to do their part. Uh, well, it's not money, it's actually <laughs> sy systems. And uh, uh, that, I suppose, is money because you've got to redesign IT systems. But I take the view that the government must make it as easy as possible for an employer to employ somebody. Yes. And of course we have to have regulations about payment of tax, PAYE, uh, health and safety, uh, minimum wage. We all uh, expect that and businesses want to comply with that. They don't want to run unsafe businesses. Um, but what 
what's government's job is to make it as easy as possible for a business to comply, particularly to take on their first em employee. So I have the concept of employment in a box, which um, is trying to ensure that you can go to one place, one person, and that they will then manage with the information you give to that one person every other bit of compliance to meet tax, yeah. compensation, and so on. Yeah. So that's the vision, and it is gradually being rolled out, because I think it will be one of the best things we do for micro-business yeah. SMEs. So will this be a website? Will all of this information be contained in a website? Yeah, I mean, a lot of the information that's available is on gov.uk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there was uh, a bit special business website, but in order to try to make sure there's one place for people to go to. You go to gov.uk, yeah. that's the website, then you can link into all the government advice that is now available. Yeah. And the idea would something like Employment in a Box would be part of that, that those websites. Mm -hmm. those, those so those maybe that's the excellent of, idea, is that because yeah. so many small businesses are terrified of that next step. And yet that next step is about providing jobs, which is obviously so important for the economy. So the easier that gets, the better, yeah. isn't it? I think one of the things that I'm taking out of this is that, you know, we've got a channel of SMEs and a lot of those people, something like 60, 70% of them are micro-businesses yeah. working from home who've maybe found themselves in that situation but have no idea where to go for support, which is why they come to Business for Scotty. What we then need to do is we then need to take them on another journey. So we need to then signpost them to where all of this information is. I want to take my first employee on, where can I go? There's a, a, a product that's been developed by government in a box. You can look at that and we will signpost from our website to it. So can I ask you, have you, uh, as Business Biscotti, had any uh, meetings with any government ministers or officials in Department of Business? Um, can I name names? Yeah, yeah of course you can. <laughs> Uh, about four or five years ago, I sent an email to Mark Prisk, who was the then business yeah. development of, uh, MP. And he wrote back to me and said, Sue, you're doing such a job, fantastic job, you don't need our help. <laughs> ah. We really do, because the message that we push out is different from any other organisation, yeah. isn't it? It's different needs, isn't it? it? We it's are fit, fulfilling a gap in the market to enable these smaller businesses to have a lifeline, really. Well, listen, I, I, I can't promise another minister's diary. Okay. Uh, uh, I wish I could, yeah. uh, but I get into real trouble. But I, let's try to see if you can meet either Vince Cable or one of the business ministers so they can hear your story and ensure that you know as an organisation, given that you're, you've grown so fast yeah. uh, and so many SMEs and micros are part of you, you can be shown exactly where the vice is on the websites. So from your websites and your social media networking, you can point people I think at, least, at least to the vice that's available yes. now, and then maybe you can advise on what where the gaps are. Yeah, because this is one of the to. points also yeah. we were making earlier about you know if you've got a big corporation, you've got the money for a public affairs company. But when we're dealing in our own businesses and we've got one person or two people, we have not got that time to make that connection and lobby and get ourselves heard. Well, so, that's absolutely so right. These channels do need to improve. I mean, this kind of step you're just saying it. Getting Sue to meet with Vince Cable, for example, if that's possible. Yeah, well, I, I hope it's really be. important. But also on a regular basis, that kind of thing as well, yeah. isn't it? I mean, I, I meet uh, with the uh, Surrey Federation of Small Businesses, um, uh, and I meet with the Chamber and various other people like that. Um, in fact, I'm holding a reception in the House of Commons in September for Surrey FSB, and if, yeah. if people yeah. want to come along to yeah. that, um, I'm sure the Surrey FSB would, would, would facilitate that. Um, so, you know, MPs of all parties, let's be clear, it's not a party political thing, it, all parties will want to engage the business, it's vital that they do. Um, the question is, how can we make that more effective? How can we make sure we respond more? In my department now, as Secretary for Energy and Climate Change, I'm conscious that in terms of the businesses that support, that supply energy, electricity and gas to people, we've got the big six who uh, you know, yeah. are, uh, control most of the market. Um, and I'm trying to make sure that market's more competitive, both for domestic uh, customers and business customers, actually. Although the business market is already a bit more competitive than the domestic market. Um, and we've done an awful lot. We've seen a big growth in their market share. We've seen a big growth in the numbers. And it's, it's really quite a positive story, actually. But um, I'm conscious that we need to do more. I'm also conscious, because energy is such a complex area, and the regulations are quite, because it's, you know, if you imagine, it's a lot of health and safety issues, a lot of really quite complicated things. Making sure that the voice of those small, new, independent players is heard is a challenge for us, and we're going to meet that challenge.
That's an interesting really one because yeah. I've been involved in the Green Deal through right. some local clubs in, in Reading with Reading Borough Council okay, okay. looking at sustainable business and bringing together the SMEs so that they could collaborate and be in a better position to accept some of these tenders from the bigger organisations. The barrier for the SME is that, yeah, they want to collaborate, but the big organisations don't want to take the risk with the collaborations. That is the story that comes back to me time and time again. I, I have heard that, and it's one of these frustrating things where when the government really does want to promote SMEs, I mean, and again, I think it's not one party, I think all parties want to do that. Um, and we want to find the best ways of doing it. Um, for example, the coalitions and a lot on procurement try to make sure SMEs yeah. could engage in a procurement for government contracts more Which easily. Which is great, up to £10,000, but once you start going to those bigger contracts, there's all of this uh, legislation and stuff that needs to come in. Now, one of the things we talked to Reading Borough Council about doing was bringing together SMEs as a collaboration and enabling them to pool their resources, so their health and safety resources, their staff resources, so that they were better placed as a collaborative to go and then take for a uh, biomass boiler in a school or yeah great idea mm. but Reading Borough Council said to me we can do this ourselves so we don't need you and they haven't done it what I wanted to do was enable these people to come together in clubs in green sustainable clubs so that we could actually make it happen and we could fulfill this government requirement. It still seems to be the, the fundamental thing though is it's communication, isn't it? It's between micro businesses, small businesses and with government, the policy makers. So is there a need for maybe that sort of regular standard meeting of anyone can come along from a micro business to parliament to meet with the people that make the decision, some kind of formal arrangement? Well, th there are actually lots of those meetings that happen. Right. The question is making sure people hear about them. There we go. Okay. Uh, it's all about communication, as you yeah. say. Um, and I, I think communication is is difficult, uh, and we just keep working at it, even though we've now got new tools. Yeah. And the difficulty is we're all incredibly busy. I mean, you know, one thing I you know about the small business people is they're really busy. Yeah. yeah. And I you'd like to say one thing about politicians: we are pretty busy too, as yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, and it's trying to make sure that the the system can compensate for that. We've got technology, and that's that's great. Um, but you know, I'm conscious of you know we had a discussion today. People didn't know about the things that we've been doing yeah. in government, even though some of them we started two or three years ago. Yeah. And um, I think the government actually has not been as good as it should have been in telling our message. Again, uh, in our defence. Part of the reason is that we've cut the advertising budget. Sure. When we came into government, we found the last Labour government had a massive spend on consultancy and advertising and so on. And we thought in tough times, you, you had to cut that. It's, it's, it's social media now, though, because you look at UKTI, and they're doing a great feed of very straightforward, plain English, simple stuff that you can see if something looks of interest or not. So stuff like that, I mean, it has changed so much. Yeah. Just, Ed, I know you, are, you haven't got forever, so I just want one final thing. And I saw this one on um, oh, This Is Money website, and it was talking about... Um, whether out-of-town supermarkets should be taxed more for local business rates to bring that money back into the community to help high streets. Obviously, that's relevant to local businesses who've got retail shops. Your thoughts on that? Well, it's a, it's a, a very live debate because the local government association have, have decided they want to do that to help to help town centres. This is, we've um, got one at uh, you know for this particular area for Kingston Montem. We've got a big Tesco's at uh, New Morton. They wanted to build another one on one of the main bypasses, which is the A3 around here as well. So, well, uh, what's your thoughts? Well, my thoughts is we've got to look at it seriously. I, I don't. Sure. I'm not going to give you a yes or no answer because I genuinely haven't looked at it. Yeah. I'm not trying to avoid it, but no. it, it's certainly something we should look at. What do you see as the issues? What? Well, well, there's a wider issue about business rates generally. Yeah. yeah. And uh, business rates are a, a, a more difficult for small businesses than they are for larger businesses. And I've always felt that the business rate system doesn't work well enough for, for small businesses. And I'll give you two ways that this, this is the case. The first is that if you're in a high street, the bit of the uh, your shop that's nearest the high street is taxed a different higher level than bits further back. So actually that is a in the favour of those businesses that have larger premises. Now you can have some small businesses have larger presences too, so it's not just 
big versus small, but you tend to find that the businesses that have larger premises tend to be the bigger businesses. So the way the banding system works in business rates for the valuation is, I think, skewed against small businesses. Yeah. So, so that would be an area I would want to, to look at. So that needs a review. I think that needs yeah. to be looked at. And the other area is um, uh, unoccupied land. Yeah. So uh, I remember looking at some figures some time ago, so I'm not sure if they're up to date. But they show that in any in your, your average town or city, 10% of the land has, has been undeveloped. And of course that escapes any, uh, any business rate. And the question is, could you, uh, would, it, would it be a good idea, and we'd have to think about it, to expand the business rate base so more businesses are paying, and therefore you can reduce the overall poundage and cut the business rate bill. But what about this battle between the out-of-town supermarkets, the, the major supermarkets, and the, the independents on the high street? How do we sort that problem out? Could you not have an area in each town which was um, set aside for small independent retailers where the rate that they pay was, was lower per square foot or however it's measured, um, and where they were it, almost like an incubation area for retail within the towns? But, uh, it's a very interesting idea. One of the uh, things that, that I've worked on with, again, Cross Party over the years is what's called business improvement districts, mm. BIDs. Yes, I'm involved with that in um, Reading. And um, I was on the as an opposition MP when uh, the last Labour government were putting this idea through. I was very in favour of it because it actually is an idea that comes from America and it's been proven to really help build up some of their business districts, not just for retail, but, but primarily for retail, but, but for other businesses too. Right. And so it was a, a good American idea which you've now got. Um, and because I was so keen on it, I ensured that Kingston was the first one. So uh, our business improvement district is called Kingston First, because we were the first one. And uh, I was really keen to make sure our businesses took advantage of this. And I was really delighted to see we're now in our third business improvement district, because the businesses, even though it's an excellent little bit of cost, so they haven't put some money in, they value it. And so can you explain a little bit what it is? Yeah, for people that haven't heard of it. Yeah, it's a um, it's a vote that takes place, so it's yeah. not it's not imposed on people. You have to get a qualified majority of the local businesses yeah. uh, in a pre pre agreed area, agreeing they'll pay a little bit extra on their rates, and that money won't go to the government, but will go to a pot where a company, which they are members of, will decide how to use that money for the local area to promote business. Yeah. And the idea was it was creating some collective money from business for business, mm. which they controlled. So they weren't dependent on the local authority. They can work in partnership with local authority, and the local authorities often have to pay money in because they have to pay business rates as well. So they're often part of it. But they're still trying to compete against gigantic corporations who've got these out-of-town supermarkets. I mean, I use the out-of-town supermarkets, I use the high street shops. But the high street shops have definitely suffered because of it. So should there be some kind of chaining of the rates, the rules, the taxes, whatever, to try and make it a bit more of a fair playing field? Do you know what? I, I actually think your the premise of your question is wrong. Okay. Because I, although I'm not saying there isn't an issue with out of town, I think the real challenge for business in town centres nowadays is online. Yeah. I think it's e-retail. And if you talk to a lot of them, that's where the, the people who they're competing against isn't actually a big Tesco. Because they've got a different product range. What they're competing with is the global market yeah, it's on the internet, yeah. Yeah. where you can have such niche product yeah. ranges. Yeah. Yeah. Very low overheads. Very low heads. And what, what I'm finding, and um, I was involved in the, uh, the review of High Streets, actually, um, and uh, what we, we found through that process, um, from Maury, Mary Porters was part of that, was how do we help businesses in the e-retail age? How do we assist them? And I've got an idea. Yeah, yeah. yeah. One of the issues is, one of the things that people like John Lewis have done very successful is that they've got high street presence and online presence with distribution centres. What if in a town centre you could have a, an incubation area for small retailers where they're all independent and part of that is an online presence portal for them 
but with a distribution drop-in so you can collect. So like Argos, got catalogue, you can buy online, but then you pick up from a distribution hub. Small retailers can't compete with that, but if you put a collaboration of retailers together, where there's a back-end website and online ordering, the whole thing's in a portal in individual towns, so it's community-based, could be really, really interesting. Well, I, mean, I think it's really worth exploring. One of the things I did when I was uh, Minister for Post Offices and Royal Mail, uh, besides uh, getting the legislation to get private capital into Royal Mail, which it desperately needs, was we made po the post office network separate. And one of the, uh, if you look at the business plans that they came up with and that we were pushing them on, is to try to get post offices to be places where people can pick up uh, parcels. For Absolutely. Yeah. Because at the moment, uh, you have to often go to a delivery office mm -hmm. for the Royal Mail, which is often so quite... a huge pain. Which is, which is a pain. Huge if, pain. If you can go to your local post office... There's no yeah. parking there. You yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. yeah. So, so I, I, I think you would... You know, obviously, there's space issues and logistical mm -hmm. issues have to be thought through. Um, but as long as the parcels are beneath a certain size, they're not, you know, not ordering yeah. huge yeah. big things, um, then it would seem to me a really good way. And I think it would, the, the sector of society would benefit most would be small businesses they would. who are trading on the internet the whole time yeah. and who want to know that there's places that their customers can pick parcels up yeah. and places where they can pick parcels up. Yeah. And if the post office network, which we've, we've saved effectively because it was really in, in dire straits, we turn that around, I, I think that is a, one of the models for the future for that. Ed, we've kept you much longer than you should have done. Fantastic. You should have been networking these people. Sue, so thank you very much thank for joining you. us once again. My pleasure. Thanks thank so. you.